There's a literary device that we all love. It's called the Epic Journey. And that's why we love movies that are built around this epic journey thing. Like Star Trek, the television series is kind of like the epic journey. Uh, Lord of the Rings, the uh, Chronicles of Narnia, um, Gone with the Wind, they all have elements of the epic journey. And uh, so I bring that up to, to show you that, or point out to you that, that the Bible is also uh, the, the story of an epic journey. And wh who, where's the journey? Who's the journey? What's it all about? I'm suggesting to you that it's the epic journey of Christ as the firstborn of creation, Colossians 1, 16. He's the firstborn of creation, and he takes this epic journey, leaving his celestial realm and becomes a human, takes on the form of a slave, goes to the cross. Why? Is that the end? No. There's the resurrection and the journey continues because the epic journey, the, the final chapter of our story is that God is going to head up all in the Christ. And you can see Ephesians 1.10 for that reference. He's going to head up all in the Christ. So the whole thing here is an epic journey. And, and we're looking at the book of Acts and we can see major parts of the story here as being the epic journey. The journey of God becoming all in all. First God becomes first God reveals himself to Abraham. So he's the God of Abraham, and then he's the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, still very personal and individual type things, and then finally he becomes the God of the nation of Israel. He's the God of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God of Israel. And here in chapter 10 of the book of Acts, ooh, we're getting close to God becoming uh, more than just the God of Israel. We're going to see uh, something strange and wonderful. Peter is being called to go visit with Cornelius a Gentile. He just happens to be a believing Gentile, not, not of the Christian variety because he hasn't even heard of Christ, but he's very devout uh, toward Jewish things, right? He gives alms and his whole family is devout, his entire household is devout with him. And uh, so we're going to look at chapter 10 and see some amazing things. Peter, the ultimate of the circumcision gospel, the king of the circumcision gospel, God is going to bust his chops and, and send him down to talk to Cornelius. And um, before we read the whole thing line by line, I wanted to scoot over and look at some verses that just jumped out at me and, and struck my fancy. So, um, as God is preparing Peter to go to uh, visit with the Gentiles, uh, it's, God gives him a vision and he sees this, he's hungry and so he sees this sheet of lots of animals. Some of them are reptiles and God tells him in this vision, rise and eat. And so Peter says, I don't eat unclean and contaminated things. And here in verse 15, the voice came out of heaven to him and says, what God cleanses, do not you count contaminating. What a striking verse this is. What God cleanses, don't you be contaminating. Don't you count it as contaminated. I can't, you know, as a parallel, I can't tell you how many times Christians have told me that because I believe in universal reconciliation that I was going to hell. <laughs> 
they they condemn me. What God cleanses do not count con as contaminated. So uh, this verse to me says, man, that, that God can do things that you may not know. And so you shouldn't be condemning stuff that you don't understand yet. Anyway, take a look at this at verse 15 and get a thrill out of it, out of it like I'm getting a thrill out of it. Let's scoot on down here. Verse 28, what's this say? Um, you are versed in the fact that how illicit it is for a man who is a Jew to join or come to, uh, come to another tribe. And God shows me not to say that any man is contaminating or unclean. That's, that's the theme of this chapter. That God's plan is bigger than you realize, pal. God's, this thing is bigger than any of us imagined. You know, and it's, it's by the grace of God that you can see that God saves you individually. And then you, you know, start looking into the matter and say, wow, he saved Israel. Or he's going to save Israel, all of Israel. Um, he's going to save the entire universe. So, so there's no need no, to, to condemn what God has cleansed and chosen. And just because you don't see it yet doesn't mean it ain't going to happen. So check that out. And then let's go down here. And uh, Peter, once he finally gets down to Cornelius' house, he opens his mouth and he says, verse 34, he says, Of a truth, I am grasping that God is not partial. Oh, wow. God is not partial? What does this mean? This sounds important. I don't, when, in my years of going to church and being a so-called Christian, I don't remember them spending any time arguing that God is not partial. But here it is in verse 34. It sounds like we should have a sermon about the fact that God is not partial. We, as humans, are, you know, we, we get into this partial crap. We have preferences that are based on logic or illogic. God is not partial. Verse 35. But in every nation, he who is fearing him and acting righteously is acceptable to him. Now, this is interesting. So, uh, Peter's vision here is that God is not partial, that even among the Gentile boys and girls, if they fear God and act righteously, that's acceptable. But we're going to see as, th as things go on, you know, when we get into Paul's gospel of grace, that that not only are, is every nation who is fearing God acceptable to him, and every individual too, but even those who are not fearing God and, and acting righteously, they're acceptable to him, not because of anything they did, but because of what Christ did for them and in them. Because all is of God, right? So let's look at verse 36 and see why I underlined it. Bringing the evangel of peace through Jesus Christ. Right there, he is Lord of all. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Jesus Christ is Lord of all? Hmm, that's something to be explored. Verse 38. Jesus from Nazareth as God anoints him with the Holy Spirit and power who passes through as a benefactor and healer of all those who are tyrannized over by the adversary. Who is Jesus? Why, Jesus is the benefactor and healer of all, of all those who are tyrannized, of all those who are tyrannized over by the adversary. For God was with him. Oh, man. Can you see that this is going to be a fun chapter to look at? Verse 40. This one, Christ, this one, God rouses the third day and gives him 
to become disclosed not to the entire people but to witnesses who have been selected before by God to us who ate and drank together with him after his rising from among the dead. So at the moment, Peter is saying that God reveals this stuff to a select few. Not to everybody, not yet. Hold your horses. So I entitled this little episode, The Spirit Crosses the Line. So the spirit, this epic journey brings Peter into the realm of the Gentiles. Uh-oh, so he, so the Spirit is crossing the line. He's not just dealing with the Jews for the first time. The, the message, the blessing, the, the thing that we want, it enters over into the Gentile realm with Cornelius and Cornelius' household. Ooh, yeah. Verse 42. This one is he who is specified by God to be judge of the living and the dead. Now, I like this verse because who do you want judging you? Do you want a Baptist minister judging you? Oh, no, you're going to go to hell. He already told you you're going to hell. Or do you want the one who God raised from the dead judging you? I want that one judging me. The one who went to the cross for me, I want him judging me. And besides, he's the judge of the living. And guess what? He's the judge of the dead. And you can't be the judge of the dead unless you raise the dead from being dead. Because <clears throat> the dead know nothing and they're dead. But if he's the judge of the living and the dead, that mean, that implies that there is a great resurrection coming in the future. Verse 44, while Peter is still speaking these declarations, the Holy Spirit falls on all those hearing the word. <gasps> Ooh. And amazed were the believers of the circumcision. Now, <clears throat> you and I are not part of the circumcision gospel, but these circumcision boys and girls were amazed at what happened in Cornelius' house. Verse 46, for they heard them speaking in tongues, in languages, and magnifying God. Wow, they were even doing, okay, so verse 47 and, and 48, that's the end of it. So, uh, that's the end of the chapter anyway. So, we're going to have fun with this chapter. And I just wanted to bring out the highlights before we jump into it. And we'll jump into it perhaps tomorrow. But this looks exciting. God is crossing the line and moving over into Gentile territory with Cornelius. And that sheet that came comes down and, and he talks to Peter and says, don't condemn what God has cleansed, you rascal. <laughs> oh, man, God. This, this is an epic journey of, of God and Christ. Be you know, arranging for the salvation of all, arranging for the reconciliation of all, arranging for the justification of all. What a journey to bring us to the point where he can head up all in the Christ and for God to be all, comma, in all. Okay? Well, grace to you and good morning.